a leader is one who knows the way goes the way and shows the way good evening to one and all who have joined us today for an interactive session and i'm sure you all must be wondering about the phrase which i used to begin things off it is our immense pleasure and sheer delight and gratitude to welcome honorable suresh prabhu ji who perhaps needs no introduction a man for whom no amount of praise will suffice and no words in dictionary would be able to apprehend and describe the contributions which he made for the nation a man of action having penchant for undertaking reforms scripting turnarounds and achieving superlative results by working in mission mode and advocate for decisive growth driven change he is well respected for his impeccable integrity passion and commitment towards society at large sir your contributions to railways commerce industry and civil aviation certainly deserves a loud praise and accolades unparalleled wisdom unflinching dynamism far sighted vision and charismatic leadership skills which has translated several visions into the living reality is what perhaps define you sir sir in the end i would just like to conclude by saying a good leader takes a little more than his share of the blame a little less than his share of the credit and your entire life could be seen and attributed largely in this way sir respected sir we welcome you on our platform of all india debating society to speak on the topic 5 trillion economy the vision challenges and road map for india over to you sir firstly let me thank the organizers for bringing me into this program in the name of the organization the organization itself is so important there is a society for bringing debates into public domain to find out what is the best way we can actually deal with various challenges that any society faces from time to time and when the challenges come in the best way to respond to a challenge is by coming out with a strategy the strategy can be devised only through a different kind of opinions being expressed and these various kinds of opinions are part of a debate in fact our society has thrived on debates i remember even good old days few centuries ago the debates led to renaissance in our society and brought in a new dynamism into our own thinking so i must congratulate you for making this society as a part of a debate to make sure that we come to the right conclusions to face some of the challenges that india is facing today so let me also thank you for uh, bringing a very interesting topic for discussion today before we come to the topic let us first us go to the basics ultimately for a period of time there has to be some measurable ways of understanding where the different economies different societies where do they stand these are with the global community this becomes very important when we become part of a one single community which the world has become even today when we are facing the challenges of corona if you really look at it nobody could imagine only about 5 months ago 6 months ago that corona will bring the whole world to the knees could you imagine we couldn't have then what happened that it started in some part of the world in one country and in that country also in one small little city not small city of course but a city and now it has spread to all over the world the united states which is thousands of kilometers away from that city is now facing the biggest challenge brazil even further away is the second most affected country in the world the biggest country in the world russia was till recently the third affected country now india has become the third and russia is the fourth so how come all this happened scientific reasons are different what are the sociological causes of it will be examined but what fact remains is that because we are so integrated we are part of one large global village as they used to call us we are getting affected by it because we are integrated in a school 
when a, there are so many students who are studying in the same class, how does teacher understand who is doing well, who is not doing well, where does he stand? So there are some parameters on which they try to judge it. So globally, now we accepted one parameter to understand different societies and different countries in the world and try to understand in terms of many parameters. One of the parameters of economic growth comes in the form of GDP, the gross domestic product, the total size of the economy. Then there are other parameters. Like for example, United Nations Development Program every year comes out with human development index to understand the growth in social parameters, where the society stands in terms of status of women, education, healthcare, many parameters. But in terms of economic growth, it's a GDP, which is now accepted as a global parameter. So even the World Bank, which is now all those countries of the world who are members of the World Bank, they also offer these data to them. International Monetary Fund, which is the bankers of the last resort, they prepare this compilation. And there are many organizations now, the World Economic Forum, which has now emerged as a very strong body, wherein all kinds of stakeholders participate and become very important organization based in Switzerland, Geneva. And they have their annual conference, which is most sort of event in Davos. They also compile it. So GDP has become extremely important in terms of measuring it. Is this the only way we can, we should be accepting it? Is this the only way we can calculate a progress? Not necessarily, because there are countries, other countries, for example, countries in our neighborhood, like Bhutan, they came out with a new concept, happiness index. They said, what is GDP? What is social development indicators in terms of human development indices, which UNDP does? Happiness is most important because that's the ultimate quest of human life. And that country, which is a Buddhist country, Gautam Buddha is the guiding force, obviously felt the same way because Gautam Buddha left everything behind. All the economic great tools he has in hand because he was a prince and Siddharth became Gautam Buddha. So obviously this is another way of looking at how the society has progressed is the happiness index. But let us not go into other aspects, let us focus on the GDP part. In GDP, which is calculated in terms of economic output, gross incomes of the people, and that gives us a measurement as to how an economy is now looking like. Three broad elements of that is industry, services, and agriculture. If you look at it, if all the people who are deriving the income will derive from one of the segment of this. In India, for example, in agriculture, more than 50% people will derive their benefits. In services, the new emerging middle class, as well as the new economy that is growing in terms of delivery boys, in terms of communication services, in terms of hospitality, all of them will be in the services. In industry, which is manufacturing, mining, construction, all of that put together will be the industry. So people derive their livelihood from one of the three segments of the economy. So it's also important from the people's perspective. Now, India, we had a very poor economic growth for a very long time after we became independent. If you go back into the history, before the Industrial Revolution, India was one of the very top economies of the world. It was the second largest economy behind China. And between China and India, they had more than 40% of the global output. And of course, today also India and China together are 40% of population. China has now, of course, become second largest economy and we are the fifth largest in the world. But interestingly, we lost out significantly after the industrial revolution. During the foreign rule, India GDP plunged, went down. And in 1947, when we became independent, there was a talk about how we should try to increase India's GDP, more importantly, per capita income. The GDP can give you an overall size of the economy. 
that doesn't mean that every person in the world in the in the country will get the same amount of money for example in india we have got almost 2.9 trillion dollar economy today which looks very good we are only behind germany so first is us second is china third is japan fourth is germany and then india so we look very good but then we have to give food to almost 810 million people 81 crore people because they have nothing else so per capita income becomes very important not just the size of gdp per capita income we divided by total size of gdp divided by the people so it may give a very misleading number the richest man in india may have 100 billion dollars and the poorest man in india may not have per capita income of it looks like on the arithmetically it likes 2000 dollars because we have 1.9 trillion 1.3 billion people so about 2000 dollars per person but it's not true oh sorry it's so our gdp 2.9 trillion dollar and uh, not 1.9 i 2.9 trillion dollar and the size 1.3 billion people so it looks like 2000 plus 2200 dollars per person does it mean that every person in india get 2200 dollars no large number of people don't get that so per capita income becomes very important in terms of increasing the people's livelihood so after independence we are facing this challenge about let me repeat, again repeat i was saying by 1.9 by mistake it is 2.9 trillion dollar almost 3 trillion dollar today in their gdp so behind germany we are there with almost 3 trillion dollar gdp and now the issue is after independence we are fighting for a strategy so we said let's go for a five year plans each five year plan will decide the priorities we are a capital start country so we'll decide the priorities and therefore we'll allocate resources limited resources in india into those priority sector so we said commanding height of public sector will bring in transformation in india's economy so what happened we had a growth rate of growth from 1947 till we landed into a serious difficulty in 1991 when narsir rao became prime minister problem was india's growth was so low that we pushed more people into poverty than people lifted out of poverty so 1991 we had no choice but to open up the economy and that actually transformed india's economy significantly and actually in last 40 years almost since we opened up the india's economy for the 30 years since we opened the economy we have seen a complete change in india's gdp profile the number of people who are depend on agriculture the number has gone up but the percentage has gone down but, but the people have gone up because the number of population in india population also increased significantly more than three and a half times since independence now the problem is that our gdp over a period of time has become more less on agriculture more on services and not so significant in industry and that constitutes about 2.93 trillion dollar economy today our challenge is how do you double the economy size and if you don't double it in such a short period of time how will you increase people's income so making india's economy grow faster is a priority so i had prepared a plan when i was a minister of industry and commerce under narendra modi's leadership prime minister modi's leadership i prepared a plan how would 5 trillion dollar economy look like when it was 2.5 trillion dollar i prepared it almost 3 years ago how will india economy should look like so it said 5 trillion dollars should be the target this is important because if you don't keep target how do you ensure that we know where to go so target is important numbers are important and india's economy has actually doubled from less than or about 
few hundred billion dollars to billion dollar, then from billion dollar we became two trillion dollars, and now we are on the threshold of three trillion dollars. So we have been actually becoming sizable economy. That's why people are getting attracted to India. So to dub, to make that economy double, we need a rate of growth. So if we can grow at seven percent, India's economy will double in so many years. If we become nine percent, it will double in so many years. It, the rate of growth is higher. That sooner will double. So I said, let us not just talk about broad numbers of five trillion. Let us prepare a detailed map for it. So I started preparing a very detailed discussion. Top class people were involved, and we prepared everything. So one of that component was twenty percent of five trillion dollar will come from. Industry. Now, what industry? Which industry will continue to that? So, I consulted top industrialists who are actually working on this on a hands-on basis. Because it should not be just an academic exercise. It should not be only a theoretical model, but a practical reality. And to do that, I said 20 percent, that is one trillion dollar, will come from industry. And this segment of industry, we prepared that detailed plan. Detail. And for each of that segment of industry, what is that we need to do to take it to that level? That also was, it was then got into very details of it. I prepared a draft industrial policy for India, so that this policy can actually help to reach the target of industry. And that policy was put in public domain, and this was the only third time India would be coming out with the new industrial policy. First was 1956 Industrial Revolution. Resolution. Then came the second time, 1991, after we opened up the economy under Prime Minister Narendra Rao and Finance Minister Manmohan Singh. We had this policy, and the third one that was put in public domain, which is now under discussion, it will be done soon. But it was kept in public domain for industrial policy. The second segment, which is service, which will mean. 60% of India's GDP should come from services. In five trillion dollar economy, 60% will amount to three trillion dollars. How will you get that three trillion dollar? So we identified very champion sectors of services. Each of the champion sectors, we approved from the cabinet 5,000 crores and said these are the very champion sectors which will boost India's GDP significantly, make it to three trillion dollars from service services. And not just in India alone, but these services can also be exported. You must be knowing that services are exportable. When we offer IT services to the world, what do you do? You export IT services. You get foreign exchange for the services rendered. That is what export of IT services. When we get foreigners coming to India as tourists, when they spend the money, we get foreign exchange. That's the export of Services related to tourism, so we said those twelve champion sectors have the most ability to create more jobs because services can create more jobs than manufacturing. This can create more jobs, and hopefully we want people for agriculture to migrate into services or industry so that people dependent on agriculture will go down, number of people jobs will go down, but at the same time they will be gainfully employed. So services twelve champion sectors were identified. And we started working on it. Will be very nice, interesting to know that India, over a period of time, as I was saying, from 1991, has already become a service-dominated economy. So services are very significant, very important in industry. Our share to GDP is only 16 percent. We said we'll take it to 20 percent. The target eventually is to 25 percent, which Prime Minister Narendra Modi has announced when he launched Make in India program. In services, it is little more than 60 percent, but we wanted also that when industry grows, obviously the share of service will go down. But we also wanted agriculture to grow into the GDP share, which is today only 14 percent. More than 50 percent people depend on. So when I was saying that if people's poverty has to be removed, the per capita income has to be increased along with the share of GDP, then we must. Make it people-centric. In agriculture, farmers are very important. You can look at agriculture as output, 
and say I have 220 million million tons of food production, 230 million tons. But what about a farmer who produces there? So if you want to increase farmers' income, which is Prime Minister Narendra Modi's priority of doubling farmers' income, I said, how do you do it? So I prepared India's first ever agriculture export policy. First ever, first time we prepared it. And actually announced it, done it. <coughs> Very detailed plan has been prepared. And this, in the, this agriculture export policy will actually boost farmers' income. So in farm agriculture export, we took five important items. One, agriculture. Number two, horticulture. Number three, dairy. Number four, meat. Number five, marine products. All five put together, we want to decided that we should try to aim to take India's agriculture export, all five items put together, should be $100 billion. And from which part of district of India we can export it? The grapes are from Maharashtra. Oranges are from Nagpur. Apples are from Himachal. Leeches are from Bihar. So, and also in not Bihar, it's Muzaffarpur. So unless we identify the district from where we can export it, how will we do it? So we prepared an agriculture export plan, taking into account each and every district of India. And from there, what can be exported was very well thought about. And we started working on it. So today, we can very clearly see that we have a very interesting possibility of India exporting more, which in turn will increase farmers' income. For that, we need agriculture infrastructure. Only yesterday, cabinet has approved the more investment into agriculture infrastructure, which is so necessary. So eventually, India's five trillion dollar economy will look like 20% from industry, 60% from services, 20% from agriculture and allied products. So one till two trillion dollar from industry, three trillion dollar from one trillion dollar from services. Uh, sorry, industry, three trillion dollar from services, and a one trillion dollar, twenty percent from agriculture. So five trillion dollar. To do this, we also said, let us work on other strategies. These are macro level ideas. Why not go to the lowest level? So I said, if each district of India can grow at 3% more than the normal growth, India GDP will be 3% more than the normal growth. Because all the GDP of all the districts in India is India's finally total GDP. So if each district can grow at 3% more, we'll reach the $5 trillion target first. But more importantly, the per capita income that is should be the priority so that common man's income must go up. That will happen now because in district, the growth happens when only the people's income increases, not at the macro level measurement as I was just saying. So we said every district of India will map, tap, and try to make their GDP grow. So to do that, we took six districts, west, east, north, south of India, and one hilly district, and Indian issue of management, National Council for Applied Economic Research, were asked to look at the entire strategy as well as baseline data. All the reports are ready. We were launched it. All states are doing. Just imagine this happens. How much growth can come in? And how much more people will benefit? Along with that, we launched a program called Geographical Indications. There are certain districts in India, say Muradabad in Uttar Pradesh, which produces some fantastic handwares and products. But if that person in that district does not get benefit of it, because this is not just another product. This has been made over a long period of time. The attraction to that product comes because it is made in that particular district. So if the job well indicators are given to that district, automatically the incomes of those people will also increase. The various challenges that we are facing in terms of people not getting the kind of money and therefore the per capita income doesn't increase, the income inequality increases. All of that can be addressed with district level growth, with GI indicators, and macro and macro enterprises integrated into it. 
So we prepared that plan separately to implement it along with the five trillion dollar plan. So it was a very comprehensive exercise which we did along with it. So I am very sure that with the kind of planning that we have made, it should not be very difficult for us to reach the target of five trillion dollar economy soon. To do this, there are individual sectors also have to be considered. For example, I'll give an example. When I was a minister of power in 2000 under Atal Bihari Vajpayee's government, there was a power shortage. People are suffering from 18 percent peak level shortage. So load shedding was a reality. People's equipments were getting damaged because of fluctuation in the voltage. All that was changed because only one law was brought called Electricity Act 2003. We brought in investment of 250, 300 billion dollars into generation. I was also launched a power distribution reform, which was not followed up as good as it should have been. As a result of that, today we got such investment into it. So, if you take each sector, each sector gets investment like this. That will add to the GDP. That will create more jobs. That will add to the per capita incomes going up. So, all of that was done in a very significant way during the course. Of this program, and planning was made for this five trillion dollar economy. Take another example of infrastructure, which will be another segment which will actually drive the growth of India's GDP. In infrastructure, will be surprised to know that. I'm going to give one example. Railways used to invest a small amount of money. So most of the money will go into salaries, pension. Nothing was available. There is no internal accrual because. The profitability in railways was always been a challenge. I changed it by getting eight lakh fifty four thousand crore plan for the railways investment to five years. This itself will boost India GDP significantly. When we'll add like this infrastructure investment coming from all other segments of India's economy, so that again will bring in more jobs, create employment, but also add to GDP faster. And because you have created infrastructure, that will help India's entrepreneurship to grow. The five trillion dollar economy. Other challenge is jobs, employment. So startup program can create more jobs. Self employment can happen. To do that, we must have very interesting program. How to create jobs at a grassroots level? I'll share with you a personal experience. Twenty five years ago, we launched a program in Konkan through an NGO called Manav Sadhan Vikas Sangstha. In which you work with the local communities, 2,000 villages, and we are trying to make women, particularly, but all, even youth, to be self-employed. That has resulted into large number of people standing on their own feet. And now, through e-commerce, we can sell the products very easily. As a result of that, people's income will go up. They'll become self-employed. So the employment is going to be a major issue in the country, in the world also. Because we are on the threshold of the fourth industrial revolution, yeah. this happens. How do you create jobs? And therefore, we must focus on village-level activities. Local products can be produced. All of this again can have a huge impact on adding India's GDP, taking to five trillion dollar. Most important part of this will be also while we work on local level like this. How to integrate in global economy? The economy of India must have a very high share of exports integration into global economy. If that hap doesn't happen, we'll never get the kind of benefit other countries got: Korea, Japan, China, U.S., European countries, all Southeast Asian countries. All of them grew faster because of integration to global economy. So I had set up almost two years ago, two and a half years ago. A group under chairmanship of great economist Surjit Bhalla, that time he was in India. Now he has been nominated by the Prime Minister to be in the International Monetary Fund. The present Foreign Minister of India, Dr. Jay Shankar, was made made member of the group. Former Commerce Secretary Rajiv Kher was made member of the group. Adil Zainulbai, the brilliant partner of McKinsey, earlier chairman of McKinsey, was made a partner like that. Chandrajit Banerjee, CEO of Uh, Director General of CII was a member of this. We said, what strategy we should employ so that India's share into global GDP goes up. 
our share increases into the global economy but at the same time can add to india gdp so five trillion dollar economy requires many intervention of this kind i am very happy that this strategic group had set up when there was no problem of corona there were no challenge to india's economy it was growing well but that time itself i set it up to get more investments into india if the companies are going to move out of china how to get them into india that was two and a half years ago and all of this is properly thought strategized i spent hours together on doing this and therefore i can very clearly see that there is going to be a great opportunity in india for taking india gdp to a 5 trillion dollar economy there are opportunities also we have to train our people for and that's why i was giving example of manav sadan vikas sanstha for skill development we have to make them ready we have to make them grow into their respective fields because ultimately the economic growth must benefit people if they don't benefit it will not happen and the element of that will be for people's benefit we should also keep in mind the environmental issues you cannot keep environment as a hostage to development if environment is deteriorated people life will be affected water land air are very important issues so therefore five trillion dollar economy should also focus on conserving environment making it better and not losing the natural capital that we have so we must create physical infrastructure but should not lose natural capital we should create social development we should be the basic purpose so that when our gdp grows the tax to gdp ratio of india will rise so government will get more money more money government will get should be invested into social infrastructure health care education and things like that we should also work in a way and that's why i'm giving example of district so that income equality inequality will go down people will have more share into this so our lower end of the bot must go up people must rise in their social status economic income that must happen at the same time so all of this was planned and i'm sure that can be realized prime minister modi has been a great leader he's trying to work on many of these issues i'm sure we'll see the better days ahead and india's gdp will rise of course today we are facing certain challenges in india like rest of the world gdp of the world is going down because of contraction that is going to happen because of lock lockdowns in many parts of the world international monetary fund has said most of the economies of the world will go down the g20 which is 86% of the global gdp probably most of the countries in g20 will see the contraction of the gdp so it's going to be a major challenging issue so therefore our target of 5 trillion dollar will probably be delayed by some amount of time because we are growing at good rate of percentage and now it has gone down but i think that's a temporary phase will definitely eventually reach our ultimate goal of developing india into a very strong economy will become very soon the third largest economy of the world in ppp terms we are already there but soon will cross germany and i am sure eventually even japan and then will become a very formidable economy even today we are the third largest economy in asia which is the future of the world's growth center so we are behind china japan and then india in asia so it is a very significant economy but the potential of india's growth is tremendous to do all this we have to invest into emerging technologies as well we have to put more money into intellectual capital we must promote intellectual property rights so that more innovation will happen more research and development will happen and that eventually will lead to india becoming a very strong economy so let me stop here let me offer you my best wishes once again thanking the society for bringing this important issue to fore i am sure all of us will work together to realize it because it's a common goal it is going to benefit each and every citizen of india but i took lot of efforts in preparing it only because i realized that if you don't have a goal how will you know where you want to reach so ultimately goal is important but just goal is not in only sufficient unless it is backed by strategy only strategy is not enough unless you have detailed action plan 
action plan is not enough unless we start implementing it. So all those steps were undertaken, and I am very sure we'll be able to take it forward. For example, when I was a minister of aviation, I prepared a plan for India's first ever cargo policy. Why? Because cargo policy will make sure that agriculture export will happen, more goods will be transported, and today you can see when I prepared it, nobody imagined it. Today in Corona, air cargo has become more important. because airlines are not able to ferry the passengers so this is an important thing that we have to think ahead of time that to work on it like the one we prepared the drone policy is the aviation ministry that is very important because drones are the future we can have a few hundred billion dollars of business from drones that will add to the gdp so each and every sector analysis to the extent it was possible we made it but more needs to be done and then taken to the logical level of india becoming what it deserves to be a 5 trillion dollar economy but i will say that is not a full stop 5 trillion dollar is a landmark we like to double india's economy from that point also to be a 10 trillion dollar economy mind you even then we still will be number 3 in ppp will become number 2 but still we have a huge potential to grow what is india's potential india's potential is indians the people of india they are our potential so their ability to think their ability to perform their ability to be entrepreneur is phenomenal so india can eventually reach any target that we set for ourselves but only target is not enough we must start strategy strong will to implement a great ability to think about all the different issue that will come up and constantly keep revisiting it because the strategy can change with the market environment for example corona is a classic example nobody could imagine corona will happen but having it happen we are facing a challenge out of it so how do you deal with this so i think we'll have to revisit it let me once again thank my friends for giving me this opportunity to speak to such a enlightened audience like all of you thank you very much looking forward to working with you to not only realize the five trillion dollar economy but eventually take it to next level and not even stop there but also take it to even higher level because that's india's potential indians potential which we should leave it to them because sky is the limit for india and the sky is so large our hands will not touch there but our ambition will take us there thank you very much thank you so much sir i would like to express my profound gratitude to honorable suresh prabhu sir on the behalf of entire team of all india debating society for sparing your valuable time and gracing us and our platform so i must say that you not only covered the topic in such a holistic and lucid manner but also give a life lesson to all of us when you said that only goal is only goal is not sufficient but it should be followed by a strategy only a strategy is not sufficient it should be followed by an action plan and only action plan is not sufficient but it should be finally implemented so sir our generation is really blessed that we have a person like you in public life of india who is known for his rigor who is known for his dedication who is known for his determination towards the well being of the society and for making india a developed nation i would like to finish sir just by saying a shloka of shrimad bhagavad gita in bhagavad gita it is said that yada charati shrestha deve taro janah sayat pramanam krute lokas tadan vartate it means sir whatever actions and words are speak and acted by the great personalities it is followed by people at last so we are lucky that we have person like you sir who can be followed by people at large so i would say that it is boon for our country and for us that persons like you are active in political and public life who is well known for his rigor for his dedication for his determination towards making india a developed nation and for well being of the society and these traits must be learned and must be inherited by our generation so once again i would like to say thank you very much sir for this enlightening session thank you so much thank you very much i really appreciate this and we'll continue to work together thank you